scanning for audio. Welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast. This week, to celebrate the release of Dark Eyes 3, comes something that I know from your feedback you actually enjoyed last time, which was the Listen Along week of podcasts. So this Listen Along week is going to be Dark Eyes 2, which admittedly came out last year, and as the review said at the time, was fantastic. But join me and we will listen along to every single episode, one at a time, and come back. So let's go for it together as we listen to Dark Eyes 2. Now, for those of you who are familiar with Pink Floyd's album The Wall, yeah, bear with me, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Because at the end of Pink Floyd's album, they say, isn't this where we? And at the very beginning of the Pink Floyd album The Wall, you hear the line, we came in. So you can listen to the whole thing on a big loop forever and ever and ever. Yes, it's timey-wimey, And it's musical, and that's the way things are. So, that's the beginning of all this, because this story isn't quite told in the order that you're hearing it. Is that a spoiler? Perhaps it is. I don't think so, though. So, episode one, Traitor, followed by episode two, The White Room, episode three, Time's Horizon, and episode three, The Eyes of the Master. Basically, you're looking at an entire season of McGann's. Each story is the equivalent of one disc, and of course there's a fifth disc involved in this, which are the extras, but that's not important, because today we're dealing with Traitor. Who is the traitor in the title? Good question, and I'm sure that if you knew the answer, that would act, in fact, as a spoiler. I am trying to remain fairly spoilerific, because let's face it, some people are downloading this who haven't quite heard the story. Go away and buy it. It's only 20 quid. It's marvellous. In fact, yes... Dark Eyes 1 was marvellous. It was award-winning. It was brilliant. It also set the standard and the bar so high that you might be, well, worried, worrisome about how good this one's going to be. We were all expecting something just too good. And perhaps that's what let this down. But given the wonderful world of hindsight and looking back and indeed listening from a distance, it's brilliant. So, everything happens for a reason. That's the opening gambit of the Eighth Doctor. Here we are increasingly getting closer and closer to the Time War Doctor. There's hints and mentions of it as we go along. Because the Time Lords are expecting somebody big to come and get them. And because the major threat that is the Daleks is being steadily removed from the universe, we have somebody else, somebody bigger, coming to get them. This is the Eminence. Now, the Eminence is Big Finish's big trick, because we got to experience the Eminence storyline backwards. We got to hear stories that happened at the end of the Eminence's timeline, before we ever heard them at the beginning. We only heard the first ever Eminence story, chronologically, as we would have watched Tom Baker a few months ago. Because that's what we used to do. Us modern Doctor Who fans used to experience all Doctor Who stories via the gift of DVD, going back into the catalogues and finding the old stories and linking them together. And that's what we had here. So we had the Eighth Doctor version of the, well, the Eminence. And then eventually we ended up back, back, back via the Sixth Doctor and then onwards to the Fourth. You can listen to those stories in order and we end up back here. So... This story, Traitor, Big Finish have managed to produce a superbly rounded world for this particular story. Yes, it's called Nexus 7, as opposed to the Nexus 6, which is a Blade Runner thing. And Blade Runner is definitely something going on. Imagine the world of post-invasion, post-Dalek invasion, Dalek's invasion of Earth type thing. But on a very rainy world, a very Blade Runner-y world, and that's what you've got. You've also got Liv Chenka from the Seventh Doctor story to do with robophobia. 
She's simply superb, brilliantly placed in this, and just a great character. She is, to all intents and purposes, the traitor of the title. But of course, that's what you're meant to believe. And who is the traitor? Well, we'll get back to the one. Now, of course, this is still called Dark Eyes, and there's no reason for it to be called Dark Eyes, not in story number one. So you've got a wonderfully realised world. You've got some fantastic acting. Now, you do have that whole thing where it slips into narrative, hence the whole Blade Runner thing, to describe the world. But there's a soundscape going on that produces something glorious. One of the slight bugbears that I have, and that exists so often in these stories, is the narration lifts. Yes, talking lifts are where science fiction belongs, because they not only tell you what floor you're on, but they also tell you your location voiced by Nick Briggs, pretending not to be a Dalek for the first time in ages. Well, yeah, the narration lifts do annoy just a tad, but they just keep the the story moving along, and that's great. Yes, it's got a Terry Nation-y feel when it comes to names, but that's not a bad thing. Someone who's met the Doctor before, and someone who isn't quite heard they seem. So a great beginning, a great introduction to a four-story box set. So I'll come back either tomorrow or the next day and talk to you about part two, which is the White Room. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of crush injuries, uh, blast injuries. No, 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 no! Where are you taking? I'm not taking you anywhere. You're just following me. We are heavy breathing friends. This looks promising. Mm. So this is what you really want, Doctor, is it? To die defeating the Daleks. Well, Doctor... There's more at stake here. As I went down to Dublin City At the hour of twelve at night Who should I see but the Spanish lady Washing her feet by candlelight? Feet? (laughs) What have you been doing since you stole that antique TARDIS of yours? Since you first landed on Scarlet? It wasn't planned. None of it was planned. Look at me! I'm not fighting a war while you battle the Daleks all the way through space and time. As we rise up and bank over the city, I see the familiar view. The remains of a great civilization, now defeated, broken. Come on, keep pushing! Keep pushing! That's it! That's it! In, 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 both of you! It's engulfing the corpse, the mummified body! Let me out! Open this door! It's happening again. Go! Now! Get them! Where? Where to? The priest hole. What priest hole? We just bounced off the edge of the universe. Slightly different, not to mention impossible. An infinity beyond your imagining. But you. Bow down before me. I am come to your world. This is all horribly familiar, and it seems to be focused on us. What the hell's in that container? You really don't want to know. I can see. Can you hear me? Isn't a fellow bet to stop the Daleks at their creation once, you know? <laughs> but I hear he didn't have the stomach for it. You've been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast, available on RSS, iTunes, Stitcher, Audio Boom, and Tumblr. Doctor Who and its associated works are copyright of the BBC. No infringement is intended. You can contact the show, donate, buy merchandise, or find out more about my other projects by visiting the Tin Dog Podcast homepage and clicking on the links. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. Mm-hmm.